I'm Patrick Byers, Horticulture Field Specialist with University of Missouri Extension. And today we'll talk about pruning. So why prune in the first place? Well, pruning is an important cultural practice. It's a tool that fruit producers have at their disposal that they can use to develop trees and berry plants and grapes into the right type of structure to maximize productivity and profitability. Certainly we can use pruning to develop and maintain plant structure. We can also use pruning to mold plants to specialized training systems. Uh, the RCA trellis, for example, with blackberries requires a specialized pruning system to work with this particular type of trellis. Pruning is also helpful to facilitate operations such as pest management, harvest, thinning, weed management, and pruning in the overall scheme of things is very helpful to improve plant strength and to encourage new shoots. From the standpoint of plant strength, by properly pruning to develop a strong structure on a fruit tree, we can minimize issues related to limb breakage. And we can also use pruning to reinvigorate older, less vigorous plants and encourage new shoot development. Another goal of pruning is to encourage long-term productivity. And again, by proper pruning, we can renew the bearing surface, the bearing portion of a berry plant or a tree crop. You know, with blueberries, for example, we tend to prune out older shoots because that encourages the development of younger, more fruitful shoots. And pruning is also an important tool that farmers have to improve fruit quality. Many types of fruit, for example, reach their peak of quality from the standpoint of color, shape, size, and fruit quality when the fruit is exposed to sun. And by proper pruning, we can open up the structure of fruit plants to thus expose fruit to sun. Pruning is also an important pest management tool. An open structure on a fruit plant encourages better penetration and better spray coverage. Pruning also removes the overwintering stages of insects and diseases. For example, by a proper pruning and then disposing of the prunings, we can reduce the issue of verified mites on elderberry. Pruning also removes dead or damaged wood, and it's an important part of maintaining healthy plants. Uh, again, this removal of dead and diseased parts of the plant reduces the problem of additional infections from these diseased plant parts. Now, when should we start pruning? Well, the bottom line is we should start pruning early enough in the dormant season to get the job done before bud break in the spring. And if you are working with a large number of fruit plants, then you need to take this into consideration. Now, given a choice, it's best to delay pruning until the coldest days of the winter are past. And typically in Missouri, delaying pruning until mid-January or even later can be beneficial. From the standpoint of the conditions on a particular day for pruning, the best pruning days are days that are dry, breezy, and cold. Given a choice, always prune older fruit plants first and then younger plants. Here are the hand tools that are important for pruning properly. First of all, a pair of hand pruners. There are two basic designs on hand pruners. There are what are called bypass pruners and then there are what are called anvil cut pruners. And for most fruit plant pruning, bypass pruners, as we see in this picture here in the lower right, are the better choice. Loppers, very helpful for making larger cuts. Make sure that you size the loppers appropriately and don't try to stretch the limits of a pruning tool. And then a pruning saw can be helpful for making larger cuts. Pruning saws have specialized blades. The blades have teeth that are, first of all, very sharp, but secondly, they're designed and angled in such a way that they shed chips as the cuts are made, and most of the cutting action is as the blade is pulled back, giving the pruner more control over the cut. Increasingly, we're seeing larger scale fruit plantings pruned mechanically. Now, this can be through the use of hand pruners that are powered by generators, or they can be hand pruners that are power assisted through pneumatic means using the uh, tractor's pneumatic system. We also have loppers and saws that can be mechanically driven. Now, the reason that mechanical pruning is becoming more important is, first of all, it's an expensive undertaking to prune a large scale orchard or berry planting. And in many cases, insufficient labor is available to do the job. So with both of these considerations in place, we're seeing more interest in mechanical pruning. And in fact, we now have implements that can hedge or otherwise coarsely or grossly prune many types of fruit plants, all the way from trees down to grapes and berries. And frequently when these hedging type pieces of equipment are used, then follow-up detail pruning by labor crews can then finish the job. But again, it can be very efficient to use mechanical pruners of one sort or another. Some thoughts on pruning and sanitation. Now, when you're using a pruning tool to prune a fruit plant, you're opening wounds. And particularly if you're pruning plants that, that could possibly have virus infections or other disease issues, it's very important to consider disinfecting tools with some regularity. 
full strength Lysol, 90% isopropyl alcohol, and chlorine bleach solutions can all be used to effectively disinfect pruning tools. It's a good practice to disinfect tools as you move from plant to plant. And if you're specifically pruning out diseased plant parts, it can be a good practice to disinfect even more frequently. Another important aspect of sanitation and pruning is to remove diseased plant parts once they've been pruned off of a fruit plant. It's a good practice in general to remove and destroy prunings from the orchard, the berry planting, or the vineyard after pruning. These prunings can be destroyed by running a flail mower over them, or they can be raked up, pushed out of the planting, and then burned or buried. There is a network of horticulture field specialists across Missouri, and they are available to help you with any questions or concerns related to fruit production. Find your county of residence or the county where your planting is located, and contact the horticulture field specialist assigned to that county. If you live in a county that doesn't have an assigned specialist, find the one closest to you and reach out to that person. I'm sure they'd be happy to help.